and this is a muon face. Okay, so, all right. Um, so we can tell neutrino types based on the particles that they produce, but also um, there's something weird about them. Uh, and uh, it's something that we learned over time, over uh, the last few decades, uh, which is that neutrinos can actually change from one type to another after they've traveled quite some distance. And this phenomenon is called neutrino oscillation. What this is, uh, what this phenomenon is, is that it's actually a result of quantum mechanics and some weird properties that we now know neutrinos have. And what it means practically is that we can make a mu neutrino beam, and if we let that beam propagate or travel for quite a long journey, and we try to sample that beam in our detector, what we'll see is that a fraction of that beam will have turned into a different type of neutrino, like an electron neutrino, shown here. And we can tell that because what we'll see in our detector is not just muons, but also a small fraction of electrons be, be produced. And this, turns out, is um, quite significant. Um, it actually is, is the thing that implies that neutrinos uh, have mass, which is something that a discovery that was recognized with the 2015 Nobel Prize in physics. And it implies that neutrinos have mass because it implies that neutrinos have to be able to experience time in order to be able to change from one type to the other. And if they're able to experience time, it means that they have to be traveling with a speed less than the speed of light. Because if they did travel with the speed of light, the time would have been so dilated that time for them would essentially stand still. So because they experience time, it means that they cannot travel at the speed of light, they have to travel at speeds less than the speed of light, which means that they must have non-zero mass. Because the only things that travel with the speed of light are massless particles. So neutrinos have mass, and actually for the longest time we thought that they didn't, and this was a groundbreaking discovery. But it raises a lot of questions, actually. Uh, for one, uh, we know from other measurements that their mass is tiny compared to all the other particles that we know, which have masses on the order of, let's say, one giga electron volt. Neutrino masses are orders of magnitude lower. This is 10 to the minus. Uh, what is that? 12, 10, thank you. Yeah, so there's a discontinuity in that plot. They're really right here. Um, just to help put this into perspective, if you can imagine that an electron neutrino weighed as much as a fruit fly, the new neutrino would weigh as much as a mosquito, the tau neutrino would weigh as much as a fly, and then the electron, who would weigh as much as a decently built human. Uh, the up-down quarks and muon would weigh as much as an EU-sized semi-truck, either empty or fully loaded, depending on where about you are here. Uh, and a charm quark would weigh as much as a blue whale. And the top quark, which is also a fundamental particle of matter, would weigh as much as the Titanic. So all of these particles, the quarks, the electrons, muons, and taus, and the neutrinos, they're all fundamental blocks of matter. Uh, we think that all of them, 
at least these ones receive their masses through the same mechanism called the Higgs mechanism. So the fact that the same mechanism would attribute such vastly different masses to neutrinos and not the other particles is a big question mark, is at the very least a flag. And we actually think that neutrinos may actually get their masses through another mechanism called the CISO mechanism. So what the CISO mechanism predicts is that the light neutrinos that we know and study experimentally today have these very massive heavy super partners. And um, the CISO itself is kind of like a ratio. The heavier the mass of this super partner is, lighter the mass of this light neutrino is. So the idea is that something led to um, these mass, these neutrinos, while originally having masses more consistent with those of the other standard model particles, something led to this asymmetry whereby these heavy neutrinos have super high masses and the higher their mass, the lower the mass of this neutrino is. So these heavy neutrinos are actually so heavy, they're a quadrillion uh, their mass is a quadrillion times the mass of, of the proton. They're so heavy that we can't actually even dream of producing them experimentally. But they must have been produced early on uh, at the very beginning of our universe in, in the Big Bang. And this actually ends up explaining not just the lightness of the neutrino masses, but it also provides us with a mechanism for generating the matter-antimatter asymmetry in the early universe. Specifically, um, what the model says is that this heavy CISO neutrino uh, would have decayed asymmetrically somehow to produce more matter than antimatter. And the reason why it can do that is because the CISO model actually predicts that these heavy superpartners are actually their own antiparticles. So that creates, that makes them special because no other, no other uh, fundamental particle has this weird property. And it makes them special in a way that they can actually violate matter and antimatter symmetries. So a big question then is whether light neutrinos show any signs of symmetry violation. Specifically, are neutrinos and antineutrinos different, these lights?